At present, around 8,000 species of amphibian have been identified, with approximately 150 new species discovered every year. Each species plays a vital role in their ecosystems, both as predators and prey. As the first vertebrates to colonize the land 370 million years ago, the amphibians have survived four mass extinctions and can now be found in almost every corner of the world. Derived from the Greek term amphibios, the word amphibian means to live a double life. This duality refers to the transition from an aquatic larva to a terrestrial adult, otherwise known as metamorphosis. Additionally, amphibians possess the astonishing ability to breathe and hydrate through their skin. Both of these traits mean they are dependent on a source of clean, fresh water throughout their life. It is therefore understandable that the richest diversity of amphibians is found in the humid tropical regions of the world. Places like Indonesia, the Amazon rainforest and the Congo Basin. In the high altitudes of central Mexico, you will find one of the largest lakes in the country, Lake Patscara. And beneath its tranquil surface lives a truly unique amphibian. Locally known as the Achoke, this endemic salamander is a close relative of the better known axolotl. Unlike most amphibians, this species does not move onto the land. Instead, it remains in its aquatic, juvenile-like state, using its highly filamented external gills to take in oxygen. However, the Achoke's fully aquatic nature is not the only reason it is unusual. This family of neotenic salamanders possess the power of regeneration. Whilst many animals, including humans, have some ability to regenerate, these creatures can regrow not only entire limbs, but their spinal cords and even part of their brain. The Aztecs who lived in this region were aware of this ability. They believed the first feathery gilled salamander to be their god of fire, who had transformed himself to evade sacrifice. Today, the mystifying regenerative ability of these salamanders is studied by scientists across the world. There is hope that in the future it may be used to treat aging pathologies in humans. Despite thriving behind glass, the Achokes of Lake Patskaro are experiencing a very different reality. As the number of people living around the lake has increased over the past centuries, the water quality has steadily declined. Forests that once surrounded the lake have now been cleared. Silt, agricultural chemicals and domestic waste now seep down the hills, choking the once clear waters. The plight of this peculiar creature is exacerbated further by overconsumption and the deliberate introduction of invasive fish species. Native to an entirely different continent, these fish are not only believed to consume the eggs of the achoke, but have also bought fish lice that parasitize the skin of the adults. The achokes that could once be seen piled high in local fish markets are now listed as critically endangered by the IUCN. Less than 30 individuals are now estimated to remain in their natural home of Lake Patskaro. Unfortunately, this waning population is not a rare phenomenon. Out of the 17 species of Mexican salamanders within the genus Ambistoma, 12 are endangered. Sadly, on a global scale, the picture becomes even bleaker. Across the world, amphibians are experiencing changes in their environments, something that their dual lifestyle and delicate skin make them incredibly sensitive to. Their natural habitats are being destroyed and fragmented. Rich, diverse rainforests converted to stark monocultures. Their essential fresh water is now polluted with pesticides and industrial waste.
reliable weather patterns on our erratic and unpredictable. To make matters worse, the global wildlife trade has released a deadly chytrid fungus that is silently spreading through the natural world, leaving a trail of dead amphibians in its wake. This amalgamation of threats has left nearly half of all amphibians faced with extinction. Thankfully, there are many concerned people across the world dedicated to the conservation of amphibians, a group of whom can be found in a very unexpected place. Atop the highest hill in Patskaro lies the Basilica of Our Lady of Health. Alongside two dozen Dominican Order nuns, the adjoining convent houses some additional residents. In white bathtubs and glass aquaria that line the walls of the convent lives a thriving population of 300 achokes. Ironically, this unique relationship wasn't initially formed for the purpose of conservation. For over a hundred years, the nuns have used the salamander's skin in a secret recipe to make an extraordinary cough syrup, which is regularly consumed by the local communities. It was only when the wild Achoco population started to crash in the late 1980s that the nuns were advised to establish a sustainable captive breeding program in order to keep this tradition alive. Their staunch devotion and meticulous expertise means that the convent's captive colony is one of the largest and most genetically diverse in the world. This diversity will be crucial to maintain a healthy population when individuals can eventually be released back into the lake. In 2018, conservationists from Chester Zoo and researchers from the University of Michoacan joined forces with the nuns in order to learn from their husbandry practices and set up a species action plan, the Achoke. Chester Zoo started three years ago in 2018 and the aim of the project about the network, it was just to set up the whole structure of the action plan for the species. More specific about the captive breeding program. And the aim of that is developing a network called EP programs, Stupu programs, which is a management intensive care about these species. So we developed that project here in Europe. And the aim is that these individuals that we have it will become ambassadors of the program. So all the zoos and aquariums around Europe will really know about it when you see the species, understanding the connection that we have it with Mexico. So that will raise the profile about the species. At the same time, this program and what it does is the network for the bringing of the individuals in Mexico. We have multiple different centers, university, the monastery, and other institutions that are really have very valuable individuals which will start contributing to the reinforcement of the population in the wild. So this is a long-term plan to breed for the future reinforcement of the populations in the wild. However, before reintroductions can begin, the reasons driving the initial Achoke decline need to be addressed. We have a wide range of different activities that is related with the conservation of the species on the Lake Pasquero, which involves the University of Miochacan, where they have a huge network of different researchers working to understand it the population status, the water quality, threats, and a better picture of the situation of the species and how we can just slightly move it forward. At the same time, in parallel, we needed to engage and work with the communities living near to the lake. And that's just part of the community work. That's just bringing back, almost like bringing back from the extinction, from the back memories of these species of the community. So it's the cultural value, the economical value, but it's just bringing back these part of the lives but it used to be so important for the communities and it almost is gone. The new generations don't know about it. So it's all the research there and the community work that it really connected really well to start planning the future for the species. Sí, sí, sí. 
Esto es lo que le damos a los de alimento a los achoques. Cuando son muy pequeñitos, les partimos la lombriz para que no se asfixen. Ya que son juveniles y están más grandecitos para comer, les damos la lombriz completa. Like the achoke, countless other species are at risk of being lost forever due to our actions. With our window of opportunity rapidly closing, we need to discard our insatiable mentalities and be mindful of how we use the Earth's finite resources. Whilst no one can be perfect, we can all make environmentally conscious changes to the way we live our lives. However few, however small, and no matter who you are. The community of the nuns plays not only just a great value about the husbandry and the breeding of the species, but also bringing an element that is very important to communicate to all the society, that it doesn't matter which part of the community you are, but part of the society you are, what is your role, what your activities you are, you're part of the solutions for the conservation. Nuns give it a hope an optimist about how we should address conservation. We can have an economical value, but at the same time, we have a connection about conservation. That this is the really strong value as well. Not only just the breeding, but as well the message to the outside world, that it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, you can really have a contribution in saving the species. <laughs>